Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And on a perfect day in Illinois, we're going fishing for the big fish today. And I'm with Rev. Rev, share with us what we have today. Well, we've got a 1965 Rambler Marlin. And uh, was it the first year for the Marlin? It was the first year. First year for the big fish. And uh, how often do you see them? Like on the road. You don't see them on the road. You the only place you're going to see them is at the car show. And here we go. Let's take a look at the online car show, My Car Story with Lou. And here is your 65 Rambler. But this one, clearly the sport model. And you're going to enjoy this. Let me just take all the details. First of all, before we forget, that was the dealer R they put in there. Rev, share with me what you were telling me about the Rambler. They would basically take this Marlin and he, he, they would bring how many cars like this to the showroom? Well, there were two for every dealership. That's it. And they were halo cars, which meant that they would bring folks in to, uh, you know, call people into the dealership. And then they'd sell them a sedan or, a, you know, a, a station wagon. And keep uh, the Marlin for, for guys like us. Come on with me for a yeah, second. We'll go yeah. on the side you know, here. An interesting thing, Lou, is that... 1965 was the last year of the Rambler nameplate. Really? It's part of uh, AMC or American Motors. And so you wouldn't see any Ramblers after 1965. Let's take a closer look. And that is a great emblem. The script, the bullseye, in the car. The wheel covers with the big R. They made three kinds of wheel covers. They had uh, one with a one with a Marlin just like the emblem. Is that right? Then they had a three spinner with the Marlin emblem and then they had this em this the, one here. The two spinner. Clearly your the uh, spoke wheel. Yes. And the tail end of this car is really really good. I mean that just looks Fantastic. I'm actually going to spin that around for you, so we'll show that last. Okay. But let's, while we've got this here, I'm going to go to the interior for a moment. <clears throat> and right off the bat, we have the advanced unit construction. I like the way they did the colors. Yeah. The, yeah. Two, the two toning. See, they had three levels of cars. They had the American, they had the classic, and then they had the ambassador. Well, this one had the ambassador uh, interior in it, which was another extra feature of the Marlin. Is that right? Yeah. This is a bucket seat car, as you can see. And then it has the what they call the twin stick shift transmission. Before I get to the twin stick, which I'm going to do, it's really neat how they have what appears almost separate buckets. Yeah. And look at that windshield, or back uh, windshield, well, I guess you'd call it windshield. Yeah, rear window. Rear window, thank you. Fun to go in there and clean that. I was just going to say, that's <laughs> got to be a real trip. Yeah. Okay, this was unique. Tell me what's going on here. Well, all it is is a, it's just a standard three-speed transmission. Okay, your H pattern. On the right, they put the overdrive handle. Now, they used to put the overdrive handle underneath the dashboard and it said overdrive on it. So to make it look fancy, they put the, the other stick as your overdrive and that's all it is. So so when you're in third, you put it in overdrive? Is that the... Uh... Actually, you leave it in all the time. It's, okay. uh, it's electrically operated. And you can hear your clock ticking away. Yep. That's great. And uh, AM FM radio, that was kind of hard to come by. And if you look right below there is the reverb feature on the radio. And then to the right you'll see the uh, tissue dispenser. You can roll that out if you want. So the tissue dispenser the comes air. out that way. So you can see that there. This car has all the features. And it also has the uh, tilt wheel, which is kind of a rare 
option too. Now, now let me ask you a question. It clearly doesn't look like a stick shift car, but you have three pedals. Okay. So you've got gas, brake. Is the clutch, clutch. for the overdrive? Well, the clutch is just the normal clutch. Oh, so this is a three-speed. This is a three-speed car. Yeah, it's a standard three-speed. I didn't realize that. I'm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wasn't. I, I. I saw this gear lever, and I just assumed, uh, you know, it was an automatic. And yeah. I, so, and this is reverse. Is the button push for reverse? You know, what that is supposed to do is, is, if you're at highway speed and you want to pass somebody, you hit the button. It's called a kick down. So it takes it out of uh, uh, overdrive electrically, and then you can blast around out there. Is that right? Yeah. You got a. Nice rambler with the power steering in the center. Yep. I'm assuming if you didn't have power steering, you wouldn't have that. Right. And that was great, Rev. I did not realize that this was a stick vehicle yep. like so. This is why we're learning all the time and yeah. we come to the channel. And it's not every day you're in a Marlin, quite honestly. Yeah. It has the electrical windshield wipers too. Most of that back in that day, they had the vacuum. So that's another addition on this. Outside controllable rear mirror. Again, we'll show the Stuff tail. Stuff we take for granted today. Right. We'll show the tail last, but since we have the front in the sun, let's uh, open this up, shall okay. we? Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> this engine came out in 64 and it went uh, with AMC all the way into the 80s. In fact, your Scrambler Jeeps had this. The uh, AMC Pacers had this. It's, it's such a tough engine because of the seven main bearings. In other words, there's a bearing in between each one of the rods. Wow. And this is your actual number right there. Let me show that. Yeah, so see, like you see 21, well, that would be the six-cylinder car. 23 would be the eight-cylinder, and then this is the 604th one made. And I enjoy all of the originality that this car features, including the American Motors yeah, your oil filter. Oil filter. Yeah. This we were talking about a little bit earlier is probably so it doesn't heat up your fuel line. Right? Fuel line. So there's that there right over. There's about three companies that make uh, aftermarket parts for Ramblers, and uh, you can get a lot of good stuff from them. That is great. I'm gonna just uh, focus on this for a second. All oh, your little interesting pieces here. What is this right here? The motor roller. That's your uh, that's your voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. Yep. And you got the motor roller alternator in there. If you look down in there, see it? Oh yeah. Hold on, I'll feature that. Let me show that. Of course, motor roller were the folks that. Gave us the uh, first radio. Brilliant. All right, let's uh, let's fire it up, shall we? While we're okay, ready. while she's running. Okay, while well, it's open, yes, sir. It's a real hard starter, you know. <laughs> I get the feeling it's gonna fire right up. I hope so. It'll, it won't now because I said. Listen to that idle for one second. Rev, while we've got it in the dark, could you step on the brakes for a second? Rev? Yeah, I got it. I'm on it. Okay. Is it working? No. Oh, that's all right. I'm gonna re I'm gonna take that out. Let me listen to that exhaust. 
have to find the exhaust, it's so quiet. Rev, let's give it a rev, shall we? <laughs> so now that you've heard it, we've spun it around. So we've taken the fins of this fish and you can see that tail. And we'll let you just meditate on that for a second. Now one thing I see is this Florida plate is interesting. Tell me about that, Rev. Well, I thought of Florida Marlins, you know, that happens to be the Miami County number one and the 6161, 400th anniversary of, of Florida happened to be. Very and that nice. allows me to put that uh, dealership plate on the front too. Yep, and I've got the Rambler across the back. This is a tremendous logo. Sharing that with you. That's really good. Yeah, it kind of matches the hood emblem, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Nicely. And the side emblems. Now we've got some trunk and treats. And mm -hmm. you've done something I really liked. I mean, it wasn't factory, but you put a little light back there so when you're driving it shows up. Yeah, a little green light you see on the back. Now as we talk about the sensible spectaculars, and actually you can hear a slight echo as I'm in the trunk, but I want to show you something that you may never see again. First of all, let me show you the trunk. You can see how clean it is. And not only it, but how deep it goes. So although kind of a small opening. So you've got the 65 owner's manual. Okay, and some tips. The build piece there. So that's classic. Talks about your wire wheel covers, tips and service log, etc. Mileage chart. There's your service coupons. Your stuff. service what coupons. Look like wherever you use. No. Nope. <laughs> the most sweeping changes in Rambler history and although this is a 65 we do have the 66 brochure room to swing in yeah. I guess it's good to illustrate you you won't see the Rambler name on there as we mentioned before so yeah it's gone now like on the back yeah so the Marlin tail has changed a bit and you can see that how does the guy get the most out of a marlin? Slip a 327 under the hood. Put the four on the floor. Yeah, the four on the floor. And some yeah, they called it a uh, luxury sports car, I guess. Put your family in it. <laughs> There's some great shots of that. The dog, the kids. Yeah, yeah great stuff. Everybody stuffs in. You can see they had a tack on it. Yeah. Kind of neat. Yeah. Good, good stuff right there. So we thought, although. <clears throat> disc brakes. That was the first, you know, they owned Bendix for a while, so that's uh, disc brakes. And uh, I don't know if you noticed when the uh, hood was open, it had the dual master cylinder. Rambler pioneered that back in 1962. Now, stock. Yeah. Just about every car there is. You want to show it? Yeah, thanks. Sure. This is something we may never see again. Selling your Rambler, but under here is the Rambler record <laughs> for the Marlin. That's great. Along with Marlin by Rambler. Introducing excitement and selling the Rambler. Yeah, yeah. Notice March of '65 because it was a mid-year release. This car. And it just goes through. Show it to your friends, and to your friends' friends. And it gives you how to sell your Rambler. <laughs> That's great stuff. All right. I think it's time for a ride, Rev. What do you think? So I'm here with Rev, and Rev, uh, first of all, thanks, because I'm going to get a lesson on how your clutch system works. So let's first show it. We've got first, second, third, and an overdrive. As you can see, overdrive in and out in our pedals. Okay, so go ahead, share with me 
how I run this like a normal car, so meaning first, second, and third. And I, I normally just leave the overdrive in all the time. Okay. Because it's electrically operated. Got it. And so what happens is, is you know, I go through the gears, I let up on the gas a little bit, and then it goes into overdrive. It's that simple. Let's show it. When it goes below 29 miles an hour, it comes out by itself. This is the self-canceller if you wanted to pass somebody, but with, with the six-cylinder, you don't pass too many people. <laughs> no, we won't be passing many people. All right, so here we go. First gear. First gear. It's all right. Second gear. Second gear all the way up. All right. So just like a regular three-speed. That's all it is. Just one, two, uh -huh. three, four. Okay, we're at 45. I'm going to let up on the gas. All right, let up on the gas. There it is. And that's it. That's it. And now we're all set. We're in, we're in overdrive. We're in fourth, uh, third overdrive. Well, the positive is this thing's got a great gas mileage. It does. It gets about 20, 22 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. Which is unheard of for a big car. Yeah. And now we're enjoying our ride out in the country, as you can see, yeah. on a perfect day. Yeah, so, we've got the hard time open up. Yep. Yeah. wonderful day. Now we've got the, uh, the sport mirror. We've got our direction. As we shared, the clock is working. And you can just enjoy some of this ride with us. Okay. So, Rev, I'm kind of curious. We're obviously, uh, we're at kind of full capacity, meaning it's a six-cylinder, so it's not a muscle car. But um, what's the reaction when you're driving this and you're in a car show? Oh, everybody's waving, of course. <laughs> yeah, hey, we love it. It's an instant front maker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like it. That's really one of the reasons I like it. I don't like to have like a Camaro or a Mustang where you see yourself, you know, coming in. Yeah. You know, for the show, so. And you shared with me, why did you have to have this one out of all the cars in the world? Well, my dad was uh, was a Rambler man, even though he worked for GM. That's classic. So your dad worked for GM, <laughs> but bought home Ramblers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he liked the, you know, he liked, he was kind of a uh, rebel, I guess you could say. Uh, a rebel. I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, a rebel. Your dad was one of them. Yeah. I'm also enjoying it. I'll just show it. But that kind of bullseye on the front end there as we drive, giving us no mix up of where we're going. Well, what a fun time and a great car. And I really appreciated your lesson on showing me how to drive uh, what turned out to be very normal, but I wouldn't have known that. Uh, uh, with that uh, transmission. Rev, thanks so much for sharing your car with myself on My Car Story with Lou as well as with the Globe. What a treat. So much fun to be with you. Thanks for being on the channel. Well, it really was my pleasure, Lou. Th thank you.